Welcome to DSP Leaders World Forum 2022, where I am delighted to be joined by Andrew Coward, who's General Manager of Software Networking at IBM. Andrew, thank you for joining us. Thank you for the invite. So, Andrew, first of all, can you tell us about the challenges that telecom providers are facing today as they build their 5G and edge infrastructure? Well, I think it's really about how do they get their money back? I mean, there's a lot of investment going in, clearly, billions and billions of dollars. Uh, and I think um, for the investors of telcos, they, there was an assumption that wasn't just about making our smartphones a little bit faster. I mean, who can really tell the difference between being on a 4G network and being on a 5G network um, from a, from a you know, video perspective or an email perspective? It, it, it just doesn't, it's not there, right? So um, it's really then about the monetization of that 5G infrastructure. And we at IBM think that's very much um, how it will be applied into industry, meaning how will 5G shape what happens on a factory floor or in a retail store uh, or in a hospital? All of those things are going to be very, very important to the emergence of the next billions, billions of devices that we want to connect. And also about how the network will need to adapt to each and every one of those different applications in different ways. So are new approaches like network automation and observability living up to expectations? Well, again, not really, not, not yet. I think um, there's been so much work done um, on automation in, um, just generally in IT. And I think we've come a really long way as an industry in the automation of just compute. We think about the movement to Kubernetes, um, containers, and so on. Um, the, the pace of automation and what actually happens is faster than humans can comprehend, meaning that uh, it would take you about an hour to understand what a computer cluster has done in a minute um, to manually go through that process. However, in networking, we're not there. If you want to go change a firewall rule in a telco or even an enterprise, it could take you six weeks to get an approval for that. So we've got this dissonance, this disconnect between what's happening in compute automation and what's happening in network automation. And a lot of the problems is that networking is very, very siloed. Um, so the radio network is managed differently to the transport that's managed differently to the IT infrastructure that's managed differently to the security apparatus. And so one of the things we believe at IBM is those things have to be tied together. Uh, and the work we're doing uh, with our customers um, in automation and orchestration, which is where this plays out, particularly customers like Dish Networks and Telefonica, is unifying um, the orchestration across all these domains. So action takes place in, in one instance. So when a customer comes along and wants to be provisioned for a service, it all happens in, in, in one instance across touching those four or five different things. The industry has been trying to do this for a long time and, and frankly, very poor marks for, for results. And so we've come along with a very different approach in how to do that with intent-based networking, policy-based networking. And we think that's making and will make a huge difference. And Andrew, what can you tell us about the importance of hybrid cloud in order to enable the transition to 5G? Well, I think for telcos, um, their customers are obviously connecting to many, many different clouds. I think maybe five years ago, we thought one cloud vendor might win. And now when we talk to our banking customers or our retail customers as IBM, we find that um, there's no limit to the number of clouds that they're using. You, know, you think maybe three would be enough. Nope, five, six, seven. They just keep going because each individual business unit is solving a different problem with a different cloud. And the problem this creates for telco is that they, they're simply not aware of, of the need to connect into and separate out what happens into each of these clouds. Um, and so from, from that perspective, uh, there's a, there's, again, there's a disconnect, if you like, between what the customers need and what the, um, the, the, the telcos are actually providing today. So again, from an IBM perspective, we, we are solving for how do you create a 5G network slice or connection and bring that all the way into IBM's cloud or all the way into AWS or Azure or whatever wherever it happens to be and provide the attributes that come all the way from the cloud and anchoring that service directly into one of those cloud providers. And how can AI and automation technologies generally enable new 5G service delivery models? Yeah, so we think a lot of the AI, a lot of the applicability is this kind of dynamically being able to change and adapt the network. Um, so we, we announced some, uh, a joint press release with AT&T a couple of weeks ago where um, we're providing, we're providing services which dynamically change based on looking at application performance across the network. This is in the fixed line network, by the way. So, so yes, we can do it in 5G, but even in fixed line, 
You know, so if if um, you know, your video conference service isn't working particularly well, you'd want to dynamically increase the bandwidth or change the parameters of how the network delivers to make that happen uh, and do that in real time. And those are the kinds of capabilities that are starting to be delivered in networks and will make an impact. If you think about it, the networks that we've built today are um, designed for one application in mobile. It's for that smartphone. Uh, going forward, it's going to be for all different types of things. And so the amount of bandwidth that's required, the amount of um, uh, latency, and all these things will play out to uniquely make that um, individual service work at its best and not consume massive amounts of, of um, time or, or bandwidth across the infrastructure. So can you tell us a bit more about the role a company like IBM can play in this space? Well, we, we really think that the um, automation business, particularly in networking, needs a reboot. Uh, and that's really what we've done. Um, we started the uh, software networking group in IBM uh, almost a year and a half ago now. Um, since then, um, you know, we, we've launched, I, I think, three or four different products. We've done acquisitions. We've, we're, we're really focused on um, what are the new and compelling technologies and innovation that's necessary? How can IBM bring those to market uh, and, and kind of change the industry and, and, and get us up to speed, you know, quite literally, at the, at the pace that's necessary to, to deliver against this hybrid cloud, multi-cloud world? Finally, Andrew, on a more practical note, what do you envision as the next steps that network managers can take in order to better their hand in network modernization? Yeah, I think a lot of it's around this kind of multi-domain aspect. How do you tie what happens in the uh, security realm together with the radio realm and, and, and building that kind of bridge across there? And a lot of that, you know, there's, there's a skills part of that too, meaning... Um, you know, we believe, in, and certainly from IBM, as we work with customers, we build whole CI/CD processes around, you know, just the automation, the integration end to end. People don't think about this necessarily, but the, the, you're actually building a product when you do this as, as, as a network manager. And by by creating these products, if you like, they have life cycles and they have, um, you know, agility requirements. All these things that require kind of perhaps a, a reskilling, particularly of, of some of the team members you might have, to make sure that you're building. Um, a continuous cycle of integration testing. And therefore, you're taking out the, the, the days and weeks that it takes to provision these separate things individually and tying it all together uh, for end-to-end -to -end as one product. I mean, that's the end goal. Uh, and so network managers really need to look kind of all the way through at what they have to do to enable that to happen. Andrew, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you.